We're off the coast of southern Australia with Hagen Steyr. He left Germany 50 years ago and has worked his way up from being a simple fisherman to a tuna magnate. The men are going out to sea, not to catch tuna, but to feed them. Steyr's assets are located around six miles off the coast. They're well-stocked tuna cages. For the tuna, it's breakfast time, yeah. The year's done, we have to get up very early. Well, the boys have to get up very early and said, now that's for the first feed. Some 3,000 tuna fish are in this cage alone. On the menu today, frozen herring from the US. It's really fatty. And that's how the Japanese like their tuna. The tuna are fed some 30 to 40 tonnes of bait fish every day. If you stand here and take thirty, forty thousand dollars and throw it in the water every day, and you pray to God that hopefully on the end you get a little bit money back so you can buy yourself a cup of tuna coffee or something. Steer can afford much more than that. At the Tokyo fish market, traders pay up to one hundred thousand dollars and more for a mature bluefin tuna fish. Tuna fish farming is booming. In the early 1990s, dwindling stocks and strict fishing quotas forced Hagenstair to go from being a chaser to a farmer. Instead of catching full-grown tuna fish, he catches several small ones and fattens them up in his cages. It's like a lottery, it worked for us, eh? They came up with the idea and it actually worked. And it worked very, very quickly. That's when other people around the world thought, yeah, we're going to do exactly the same. Tuna have a huge appetite. To put on a kilo, they need to eat up to 25 kilograms of fish. They're harvested after around five months. The majority is deep frozen and exported to Japan, where it ends up as sushi in restaurants. The industrialization of traditional fishing is a multi-million dollar business. Port Lincoln is Australia's fishing capital and a tuna stronghold. The small town boasts large fishing fleets and the greatest number of millionaires on the continent. Hagen Steer is now trying to push his good fortune a step further. He's busy working on his next big idea. He wants to raise tuna in captivity at an onshore facility. The project is being developed in absolute secrecy. The problem is that bluefin tuna only spawn after they've migrated a certain distance. Hundreds of kilometres from Australia's southern coast, then north along the west coast to Indonesia and back. Steer's idea is to trick the fish into reproducing by replicating their sea journey all at his onshore facility. Biologist Morton Deichmann is the creator of this fantasy trip. Each detail has to be perfect. Tuna gets much more stressed than other fish and when they do that they basically start or stop eating, they start dying so it's very difficult to handle them correctly without actually hurting them. So in the beginning of course we had to learn how to handle them. The experiment began in October 2006. Helicopters were hired to bring the heavy female tuna fish weighing over 100 kilograms on shore to spawn. This is where their artificial migration began. In recent years, Hagen Steer has invested $35 million in the project. We accompany him to the valuable female tuna. We're not allowed to show the lights above the basin. But the sophisticated installation mimics natural light conditions. In addition, the pressure, salt content and temperature are constantly changed. Underwater cameras observe the fish round the clock. We're trying to produce the sun, the moon, the stars, the water, the tide, the feeling for our fish, the feeling for our tuna. 
so they get amorous and make love to each other and to create little tuna. But it hasn't been easy. It took two years. Finally, in March 2009, the female tuna spawned for the first time in captivity. A fish larva emerged from the fertilised egg cell. The first step in sustainable tuna fish breeding. Either you do it this way, if you want to eat southern bluefin tuna, or you stop catching southern bluefin tuna at a certain point. So there is, if we want to have this fish available for us to eat, we have to do it this way. The research could help secure the survival of the bluefin tuna. But there's still a long way to go before successful tuna aquaculture becomes the norm. A first attempt to fatten the fish in the cages in the sea failed last year. There are plans to try again. Yeah, we just need that little bit more to take the next step. But you know, if I would have said four years ago, five years ago, if you can get the fish up to this size, people would have thought I was a crazy man. The farm tuna are expected to hit the market in 2015. Hagenstair is hoping to make millions. Profits combined with sustainability. If it works, Steer could end up saving a hugely popular dish, sushi.